welcome back to my pregnancy vlog series. It is Sean, and if you're new here, I have been documenting this journey since five weeks pregnant, so definitely check that out. I am already a mum of one three-year-old, soon to be four-year-old, and we are on week 38 of pregnancy, the final stretch. Last week, I wasn't even sure if we were gonna make it to this video yet here we are so i am currently 38 weeks four days so right in the middle and i just thought i'm gonna get this filmed because again at this late stage in pregnancy we just don't know how many vlogs there are gonna be feeling a little bit hot and sweaty filming this because i have just been on my second walk of the day let's see how many steps i've got in today so far i have done oh that's really good nine 9.3 kilometers in distance which is like about 11,700 steps I'm doing well I'm doing well today but I am a little bit sweaty bay so please just ignore the hot mess of me let's get right into it so I'm going to start this vlog by being like last week I was telling you I'm having all the rumblings, all the feelings. I really was like I give myself a week max, this is all starting. I was feeling a lot, a lot, a lot of pressure down there. I know at this stage everyone feels very uncomfortable and heavy down there but I was getting to the point where I was like this baby is coming. However, I hadn't felt anything painful which I know it does get painful. I haven't found anything consistent and I didn't have anything like substantial where I was like, oh, it's really starting. I just felt like my body was warming up, my body was prepping and that it would happen very soon. Cut to a couple late days later, towards the end of week 37 and start of week 38, I really wasn't feeling anything. So it kind of all stopped, which I know can happen. And I just keep telling myself that it's my body's doing all this prep and that is just because I'm going to have this amazing, beautiful, calm and safe and healthy and faster labour. Okay, so we're trying to stay positive, but I'm not going to lie to you. The last two days, I think because I thought, I remember telling you guys, like I thought it was going to happen on the 22nd or the 23rd of August. I also was hopeful that I would have a Leo baby just because I have a lot of Virgos in this household. Love Virgos, nothing against Virgos, but three of them in one household seemed a bit like, ah, um, you know, but it's fine. We're embracing it because now I know I'm officially going to have three Virgos in one household. So my partner, Elvis, and this baby is going to be a Virgo and that's fine. It's totally fine. It's just going to be how my life is and I love a Virgo I know how to deal with Virgos I know what a Virgo's like so in that sense yeah we're good um but yeah I think I just had a couple days after like the 22nd 23rd when I thought it was going to happen and I was getting all the feelings I hadn't been sleeping good partly because I thought it was happening partly because of the heat partly because of the need to pee and just so uncomfortable in my pelvis and hips that every position it would wake me from my sleep that my my hips and pelvis were aching so much and I was like this is just not okay I can't get back to sleep and it's that thing when you're heavily pregnant it's not just the waking up it's like hard to get back to sleep and every little ache and pain and groan you know it does send you thinking you try not to think too much about it but you are like oh oh is that something no nothing as of yet 38 plus 4 now being optimistic I could still have an early baby at 39 weeks or just before my due date and actually I got to 38 plus 6 with Elvis so I've still got two more days before I'm kind of past the most pregnant I've ever been which would be wild if I make it to 39 weeks I'm literally thinking to myself that will be the most pregnant I've ever been in life let's get on to week 38 shall we enough rambling can we talk about poo I'm sorry, I have to go there. This is TMI and you know what? This is what this channel's about because who is a factor? And I would say like a lot of women get like constipated in pregnancy. They get, they go more often in pregnancy. I don't know, but for me personally, I never suffer with any sort of constipation. But what I will say, at this late stage when the baby is this big, this heavy and this low, there is no, how do I say it? There's no storage space in the body. So after every meal, 
I gotta go. Your girl's gotta go. And it's like, there's no storage space. The baby is pushing down there. So for pee and poo, it's the same thing. They are very regular occurrences. And I'm not mad at it. I feel so much better once I've gone to the toilet. Um, I don't feel as heavy or as bloated down there. And also, I'm just thinking optimistically in labor. You know, we all hear it's very common to poo yourself. I think if I'm the type of person that has an empty bowel. Okay, be careful, please. I'm just filming my vlog. Back to poo. What I'm trying. You fixed it. Thank you. You can carry on drawing. No, I didn't draw it. I don't want to draw it. Right, okay, mummy's just filming her vlog, so can you give me five minutes and you can have five minutes playtime? I don't need to, I don't need to do playtime, I need, I need to be, uh, uh, I need to be doing work. Go on then, you go do some work. Okay, sorry. What I was trying to say was that I'm not mad at having an empty bowel for labour. You know, I think that that would be a very good thing. I think I would feel less worried about pooing myself. As I said, so I've been doing all the things that I feel like will... I'm not trying to induce labour, and this is what I said in the last video. I'm just trying to prep my body with all the natural things, like the dates, the raspberry leaf tea, which is all meant to help labour as opposed to induce. But I do know that you can, like... Some people say the red raspberry leaf tea can induce labour. Um... But I don't know, I think the evidence on that one's a little bit, whatever. Walking, the sex, the orgasm, eating the spicy curry. So I feel like at the start of the week, Ken really wanted it to happen. I feel like he didn't want to go work that week. I feel like he was like, no, like I'm ready. I'm ready for the baby to come now. And he ordered me a vindaloo. Jesus, I mean, I love spicy food, but that is hot. But I done it. I sat there, I powered through, I was a soldier, I was sweating on the nose, I was needing to blow my nose, and I think at one point my ears were slightly ringing, but I did it. Nothing. And I do think all those things that they say to do work if the baby's ready. And this is what I just needed to come to a place of acceptance. So when I had those couple down days, I stopped doing all the things because I felt like I was putting too much pressure on it. Um, I didn't do like my colostrum harvesting because I do feel like they say nipple stimulation and that can bring on labour. I had two days where I didn't walk because we had quite heavy rain here. So I basically just took a break from everything and I feel like I needed to do that to take the pressure off. And today I've woken up with just such... I feel so much more comfortable. Now, I don't know if that is a good thing because the fact that I feel so comfy today, I'm like, what? I did like a... My walks today, for example, have been probably the most comfortable walks I've had in a couple of weeks. So I don't know whether the baby's changed position or whether the baby's just like bobbed back up again, which the midwife said can happen sometimes with second babies. They bob in and out. Um, I have no clue, but I'm feeling a lot more comfortable, which is good for me physically, but mentally I'm a bit like, oh, I don't know, because everything's stopped. I'm feeling a lot more comfy. Um, so I'm just going to leave it in the hands of the baby will come when the baby comes. And I know this is going to be such a struggle for me because I really anticipated this baby coming early. But I mean, like, because at the start of the week, I really thought everything was happening. I literally washed my hair because I was like, I don't know when the next time I'm going to wash my hair. So I shaved my legs. I exfoliated my face. I tinted my eyebrows. I was like ready and raring to go. My nails were fresh. It, like, you know... Obviously, I've been doing all this stuff to prep my body, but I'm also like checking things off my list so that mentally I feel ready to go into labor and be like, no, no, I'm ready physically. I'm ready as in my to-do list is done. Like, I think that that's important as well for you to feel like you've got everything done that you wanted to get done. And because I did all that, now I'm at the end of the week, I'm like, I've got to do it all again, really. So I feel like this weekend, I've got a new lease of life. I've had a couple of days where I'm like, take, I've taken the pressure off. And I'm not going to put the pressure back on in the sense of I'm not going to look at the clock. I'm not going to look at the dates. I'm not going to, you know, obsess over it. But I'm going to go back to really prepping the body because, you know, ultimately, I do think if you don't do that and you do it nearer your due date, you don't give yourself enough time to let some of these things work so i am going to go back to going ramping it up this weekend i have been walking like 10 kilometers or more a day sometimes seven 
I've been walking a lot. Um, this weekend I'm going to wash the hair again, I'm going to change the bed sheets, I'm going to have everything fresh and ready and raring to go. It's a bank holiday weekend and I keep saying to the baby, this would be a great time to come. Daddy's got a bunch of time off, you know, there's people about to help with Elvis. It would be a great time to come, I'm just saying. Just putting it out there. My sweet tooth, these past couple weeks has been getting out of hand. I have been relatively healthy this pregnancy. I've definitely been way more active. I eat when I want to eat, but I keep my meals relatively healthy. Now I'm at the point where I could have like, just I just want the sweet junky stuff. I want a donut, I want a cake. It's every day. It's not even as a treat. And you know what, I don't mind that. I've been definitely overindulging, but I'm at the point now where I'm like, I don't know how long this is gonna go on. And it obviously isn't super healthy for the baby. So I'm trying to rein it in a little bit more, pre-making myself like a chia seed pudding, which I love as like a sweeter alternative and then popping that with some honey and fruit and maybe like some flaked almonds on top, um, freezing some grapes so that I can like snack on that rather than having like ice cream. Um, and you know, some days I'm still ind indulging and having the snacks, but I'm just trying to rein it in a little bit. Um, and that's each to their own. I just think for me, it's more about the nutrition and also just not getting too carried away with, like, am I doing this because I have a craving or am I just being overly self-indulgent? And also, could this be the reason why I was having a couple low moments and feeling a little bit fed up? Yes, I'm heavily pregnant. And I'm sure everyone feels fed up. But could it also be a little bit because my nutrition and my diet was not great? Because that does have a huge impact on your mood, I think. Mentioned earlier about the pelvis pain. It's just been so bad. Um, to the point that I'm literally feeling like I do have a bowling ball between my legs. I have been stretching so much more, which seems to be helping, but it just isn't fully like going away or anything. I'm at the stage now where my pelvis is just gonna ache, my hips are just gonna ache. I mentioned it earlier, it's been hard to sleep. Although last night was slightly better. So I'm just gonna keep you updated on that one, guys. Right, I mentioned the last video about the red raspberry leaf tea because I really wanna up it. I'm ramping it up this weekend, guys. Come on, let's have this baby. <laughs> this video is gonna come across so like bipolar because in one breath, I'm like, let the baby come. I've, I've resided to letting the baby come when it wants to come. Then I'm like, I'm ramping it up. The baby is coming, like push, like you can tell I'm a little bit confused, but what I'm trying to say is I'm at a place of acceptance of when the baby comes, but I'm still trying to do all the things. I don't know. I don't know guys, but red raspberry leaf tea, back to that. I found one online that is 100% red raspberry leaf tea, because as I said to you, the two that I had were blends, and I don't know the exact percentage. So I found, I found this brand, I'm gonna insert a picture here of it, and I have been brewing it on the stove now, so like really like letting it boil over for quite a while, so that you really get a strong brew of tea, and I'm having that still three times a day. If I'm honest with you, sometimes I forget to have it, because three times a day is quite a lot, and I don't think I'd be able to have it more than that, because it's just like remembering to do it. I mean, I've heard that some people really brew it up and they have it in like a big water bottle, and they just drink it like cold throughout the day, but um, me personally, I don't know, maybe next week if I'm still pregnant, I might try that. But I just wanted to let you know I'd found this brand. It tastes, it doesn't taste as good, I'm not gonna lie. The Holland and Barrett's brand, the, it's like Heather and something, and the maternity brand, does taste a little like it's got like a fruitiness or a sweetness to it. This one that I've just got, um, tastes a little bit like blander, but, it is pure and that's what we want. We just want it to do the job it's meant to be doing. So I'm actually okay with it not tasting of much. I'm very much a plain, like I drink water, herbal teas kind of gal. So that for me is very normal and I'm still eating all the dates. However, like I often run out of them because it's quite, hard to like get that many dates to last you for the week so i'm gonna try and ramp that up again this weekend make sure i'm really getting the full amount before i go i wanted to show you the cutest gift that elvis apparently this was elvis's idea look at this beautiful docker top um breastfeeding cushion 
newborn cushion it's just gorgeous look it's got a little tassel on the end it's got bees on it which is similar to my baby shower theme now what you can't see there is it's so super soft it's literally like i just want to rub myself on it um so yeah that was apparently elvis was like to daddy i want to get mommy a present let's get her a cozy cushion i thought that was the sweetest thing disclaimer when you have a three year old they often have three major moments so he had a really nice mature almost four year old moment where he was like i want to get my mum a present and do something kind for my mum and then he decided when it arrived that he didn't want to give me the present had a full-blown tantrum because he didn't have a present from me um even though i was completely unaware that they would get me a present so it just goes to show like he had a really kind moment but i just want to keep it real as a mum that like when it came to actually giving it to me he was a bit like no i don't want to give it to her now and i was like oh oh am i getting a present or not this was the beautiful present it's by docker tot which used to be sleepyhead it's the same brand i showed you in the nursery that we've got and i will let you know how i get on with that when baby arrives because we are ready i feel like this was meant to be a short video and i've really rambled on so i'm so sorry if i have um the only other new thing i'm doing this week is the clary sage i have just popped a bit of clary sage on this like little face muslin cloth sniffing it all day having that smell around me and um, it's meant to induce labor or help with labor and i've put it next to my bedside so i can like sniff it throughout the night and i mix a couple drops into my belly oil and rub it on my belly i've started doing that the last couple days i'll let you know i don't really know if that makes a difference i'm just trying all the things now so guys i'm gonna put it out there let's hope yet again i know i'm saying it again but let's hope there isn't a week 39 vlog let's hope that the next video is talking about birth and labor i'm excited i'm glad i filmed this video today because i'm definitely feeling more positive if you are a similar gestation to me and you're not feeling very positive trust me hun i had a couple days where i was feeling super fed up it's totally not my personality and yet there i was just being a little bit down in the dump so i know it's normal um just ride it out just take take a nap if you can and just remember like your baby is coming we're on the home stretch we're almost there so i'm gonna say goodbye and we shall see what the next video is okay take care guys thank you so much for watching Mwah.